Mr. Burroughs is a professor of journalism at New York University and the founder and director of its graduate science and environmental reporting program. Would you please welcome William Burroughs. <laughs> Thank you, Judy, uh, and thank everybody for um, being here. One of the things um, that uh, runs through the entire history of the space age and, and, and before the space age is the direct relation between science and science fiction. Uh, you're not at this too long when you don't come to understand that it's the science fiction people, the SF people, as one of my friends uh, calls them, who laid the blueprint uh, for the people who actually built the rockets and planned out the programs. Uh, and I did a fair amount of thinking about that uh, throughout the entire process. Um, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who was the great Russian rocketeer and the father of rocketry and who we never heard about during the Cold War for reasons that will not mystify you, uh, Tsiolkovsky and Hermann Oberth, the German, uh, the father of rocketry there, and our own uh, Goddard, Robert Goddard, uh, all read Jules Verne. They all read from the Earth to the Moon, and they all had, if you'll pardon the expression, had their fires lit uh, by that wonderful voyage. They all read H.G. Uh, Wells, uh, The War of the Worlds, and so on. Um, these people were energized and captivated by science fiction. Uh, I started the book off, in fact, uh, going back to Daedalus, because I had to come to I had to come to grips with why exactly do we do this. Uh, there are cynical answers, uh, and they're relevant. Uh, one is that corporations in aerospace want to make a lot of money. Another is a lot of generals on both sides wanted to get the high ground for a supposed advantage, whatever that meant, and we're still not sure we know. But beneath that, um, there were the dreamers, there were the sci-fi people, there were the people who wanted to go for what reason? This is what I had to try to come to grips with, and when I went back to Daedalus, when I went back to Greek mythology, it occurred to me that one of the reasons is transcendence. I came to realize in the course of researching the book that what I was dealing with was not hard no in, in reality, was not hard-nosed businessmen uh, who were trying to keep their stocks up and generals who were trying to one-up the enemy. What I was dealing with was members of a religion. And that's exactly what this undertaking is. What else to call people, I'm talking about serious engineers who design colonies on Mars and interstellar missions that they know they will never live to see. What else to call them but members of a religion as people in the Middle Ages started to build cathedrals they knew they would never see finished. And what is the trait that has propelled this all of these years? That's what I got into, um, and the rest of it is the top of the proverbial uh, iceberg. Uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore.